I'm Alan Sorry, I'm the lead consultant. Jen Disher. We're here, uh, Dr. Murphy's request to discuss uh, the care of your infant. Um, as I understand, he was born premature and has a lot of uh, different severe medical problems. Um, and there's some questions that need to be decided on about the future path of, of his uh, care uh, from this point on. Um, so we're gathered together to just have a discussion about that and to see what everybody it feels uh, would be the best option uh, to go from here. Um, since they didn't give us the information, what, what's your child's name? Brian. Brian. Okay. And how old is Brian right now? Because they know he was born prematurely, but how, how long ago was he born? Uh, maybe two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and how's he doing? Um, see, that's what. Yeah, we, okay. yeah not so good. Um, and we really don't know what what's really wrong with him. We don't know what PDA means or PBL, and we're wondering if you could explain that to us. Okay, that that will be part of what we'll do today, and okay. um, you know, hopefully answer all your questions. Um, with what you do know, um, what's your understanding about his illness, uh, at least at this point? Um, I know obviously there's some things you need to find more information about, but um, what about his overall illness, severity of illness, what, what's your impression? What we do know, he may have some developmental issues, but we're not sure to what degree. And we think he's going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're praying for him every day and we hope everything turns out well. Right. Dr. Murphy, could you give us uh, a brief summary of this sure. commission? Sure. Well, well, thank you for coming in and uh, taking the time. Um, you know, and as you know, um, uh, Brian was born very early. You surprised us. Um, he was born at 24 weeks gestation, um, which is about as, as early as babies are born and ever survive. I mean, um, you know, if you come two weeks earlier than that, our chances are virtually zero at that point. Well, I was a premature baby, and I need it. Sure. So, yeah, I know a lot of right. premature child that's sure. uh, and, that, and that's true. Um, but as I say, um, every week counts when you're at that early. And, and Brian is right there at that line, which the, is the earliest we typically ever see babies surviving. Um, and, uh, but, and, and their survival chances really do mat uh, matter a lot in terms of what other conditions they have at that point that, that's uh, um, causing them difficulty. And unfortunately, Brian was born um, with uh, very severe issues um, impeding him. Um, you know, in particular, as, as I heard you, uh, you've gotten familiar with a little bit of the um, alphabet soup that we use here. Um, you mentioned PVL, which um, is a, a brain condition. And so um, his, uh, he's, the, there's um, the white matter in the brain, the outer part of the brain there, um, typically is the part that helps conduct signals from our brain to the rest of our body. And so when we move our hands, it's because we have signals coming from the brain here. And uh, when you have PVL, um, you have serious problems with that white matter. And so it doesn't actually conduct the signals. And so um, babies that are born this early with PVL um, usually have uh, very severe problems in terms of developing um, their control of their muscles and being able to walk and all of those kinds of things. Um, and and uh, typically, um, they, in a case like this, we would predict that he, he, had, he would likely have cerebral palsy as he grows up. So, um, and you may be familiar with that, uh, children with cerebral palsy um, normally need years of therapy to learn to walk. But they still make it. Um, uh, they, they, well, uh, if he makes it, we expect that he would have cerebral palsy, because that, that in and of itself is not an indicator of whether he's likely to survive or not. Do you know any cases where children have been continually you know, worked with? And Yes. Well, well, certainly um, some children who, uh, who do survive and have uh, therapy, and again, we're talking about regular therapy for years and years, um, they recover some, they can recover some quality of life so that they're, they're able to get around a little bit and things like that. Um, but their, uh, their life is, is very impaired. Um, now, because of other things that, that we know about Brian, um, we think that he, you know, if you were to line up um, all those the, the factors we know that go into whether a baby does well or does poorly, 
Brian is on one end of this curve having a multiple number of factors that indicate that if he were to survive, he would be doing very poorly. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the brain damage in this case looks severe. As you know, he has a hole in his heart, um, which is, is uh, uh, fairly significant in size. Now, we have surgeons who may be able to correct that. If he, if he becomes stable enough, they may be able to take him to surgery and correct that. But already there's damage that's happening because the blood flow is not flowing out the way it should be, so he's not oxygenating, so that's making the brain situation even worse. As you can see, there's, there's significant swelling in his head his, um, because of, of there's, for reasons that we're not really clear on, fluid is building up around his brain. So along with the already existing PVL, he's probably incurring additional damage from the pressure on his brain. So we, we, we're putting, we put a shunt in to try to drain some of that fluid off and release some of that pressure. Um, but time is not on our side with this. Each day that he's doing poorly, um, and rather than getting better, um, the chance that he's going to do well. He was, he was born with his scores at birth were very low. His APGAR scores, which are predictive of, of how one will do, were very low. And we're can not you, doing Dr. Mark, can you explain what APGAR scores are? Uh, well, it's, it's really a series of tests that tell us um, how well uh, the baby is, is doing at that point, how he's responding to various stimuli. Um, and, that, and that can tell us just, you know, what, what, what kind of functioning we have underlying in, in, in the baby at that point. Um, and so he was not doing well at birth, and each day that we have more of these symptoms emerging, uh, the, the, the worse it could get. So, um, I mean, really what we're, we think is, uh, you know, we talk about survival. Um, right now, we think of the, the, the motor difficulties, the brain difficulties, it wouldn't be a surprise to us if his um, hardware is shut down altogether. Um, as you know, we're supporting him right now. We have a tube down his throat to help him breathe, so we're actually supporting his breathing. Um, if we were to take that out, he would die right away. So things at this point are very serious, and we, and we do expect the best case scenario is a very poor outcome, that he would, he would not do well, that there would be severe mental impairments, severe um, physical impairments. Um, and including that could be things like blindness. It's just too, it's too hard for us to tell at this point. But um, we expect you know, patients like this are often blind and deaf and have a whole variety of these impairments. So um, we, we don't think this is a good scenario right now. So if he were to live, are you saying that he would have a great quality of life? Uh, I, I, I think that's fairly safe to say that there's a very high probability that his quality of life would be very poor. Yeah, I'm sorry that you know you have to deal with such a, a horrible issue um, at this point. It must be very, very difficult um, to have a, a child so sick. Um, have you been uh, supported um, in the NICU by the staff? Um, have they been giving you information and uh, helping you uh, cope with this going on? Yes, but I'm a little disappointed because I thought Loyola was the best. Um, neonatal care for for children. So yeah, they they've been supportive, but at this point, you, know, you just thought things would have to be better. I someone would have a better outlook. Um, what do you feel um, may be the cause of the uh, the lack of the the better outlook? Is it, is it the care that he's receiving, or is it his disease, or maybe a combination in your mind? What do you think is going on? We just felt that this is like the best hospital that Yeah, you know. and like, it gave us a lot of hope. Like, we've been praying every day and just hoping that he, he'll do better. Mm -hmm. Have you um, met with uh, pastoral care, um, or have your own? Um, uh, pastoral cares uh, that you can uh, rely on? Our own, you know, they've been praying and we, you know, We're we are hoping for a miracle. Yeah. Okay. Can I step in for a minute, sure. So what I'm hearing is that you came to Loyola um, because you knew that we had one of the best NICUs in town. Yeah. Um, and so your hope was that we knew Brian came very early, but that you would, um, with, the kit, with, with the right treatments, that he would come along. And we hear from Dr. Murphy that we've we've been doing a lot of a lot of interventions for Brian, trying our best to get him past these two critical weeks. Um, but those treatments or interventions haven't really um, given us the outcomes that we would hope for um, for your son Brian. And I can sense that you're really disappointed 
Yes. Um, you know, the hope that comes with having a baby and, and the dreams that come along um, with that. Is Brian your first? Yeah, first baby. Just wanting to be healthy. I can yeah. have a child. Right, and and the reality is that Brian's not healthy. No. So is that is that a pretty accurate description of, of how you're feeling right yes. now? It is. So, I mean, obviously, it sounds like what you're expecting, what you're hoping for, is that he will do fine. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, from what Dr. Murphy says, the chances of that happening are very, very small. Um, and obviously, we always hope for the best possible outcome. Um, if he continues to do badly uh, without any improvement, um, over the, the, the near future, um, what would you expect us to do then, and what do you think would be the best course of action for your son at that point? Stick it through. I just stick it through. I would, yeah. Because we believe that as long as he's alive, there's a chance that yeah. perhaps he can improve. Okay. Um, and you know, right now he's on. Uh, multiple um, types of organ support, um, and it's not, you know, it doesn't seem to be changing the outcome. Um, if he does improve as far as his lungs go um, and his heart can be fixed, for instance, um, it still leaves the issue of the, um, the brain uh, injury um, as present. Um, and that would be a lifelong uh, problem that most likely would not be amenable to uh, any specific treatment. Though with therapy over time, there may be, you know, mild improvement. Um, what do you feel, um, what are your feelings as far as his potential quality of life in the future? Um, and being severely disabled. Um, you know, everybody is very different about what they would want uh, and what, you know, you would want for our loved ones. And I'm just curious if you can tell me what you feel. You know, as parents, um, we really, you know, plan to be there for our child, even if we have to go, you know, far lengths to make sure he has some quality of life. We're willing to you know, put ourselves there and commit ourselves to give him the best quality of life that, you know, he can have. Um, we've known, you know, other people who have had children with uh, conditions um, that are similar to these, but um, their parents have been there and they had a community around them to support them. And the child, you know, is, is doing okay. They aren't as, you know, like other children, but, you know, they do have, you know, a life that they're living and they have their family. And we'll be there. Mm -hmm. Do you have other children at home? No. This is our first. And I, and I asked that because um, one of the things I know about a, a child who's likely to get severely disabled is Brian is um, he would have to become the center of your life and could you, um, detract from the care you give to other children. And because for instance, again, think about what, what we're saying here. We're talking about a, a, a baby who um, is going to not be a baby forever if he survives. He's going to keep growing as he gets bigger. Imagine blind, deaf, um, and unable to ambulate on his own completely. Um, and so you would have to be um, essentially doing everything for him, taking him to the bathroom, doing, doing all that. And um, the, uh, you know, obviously there are great rehabilitation institutes that can, that can eventually teach him perhaps if his, if his um, brain impairments are not too, too, as severe as we think they're going to be to get around a little bit in the house by himself. But that's all even a long way down the road. So your, your life is going to revolve around him 24-7. And so a lot of times people take that into account. Most families, when they think about this, do consider whether um, taking these chances to try to bring him just to that point are, are really worth it or whether, in fact, um, you know, we're being told something different by his body at this point. I feel like you're telling me that we should let our baby die instead of living, so I'm really uncomfortable with that. Well, I, I think the major reason that we're here is to explore the various options that you have. Um, our, our job is not to tell you what to do. Um, it's a decision you have to make you know, based on what you believe is 
right. And based on your underlying value systems, your morals, um, religious background, family background, um, families are going to have different decisions. You're going to be faced with the same problem, and what's right for you may not be right for the next family. So you need to work it through, um, discuss it with your family and your support um, that so you can come to a conclusion. But we want to make sure that you fully understand where the situation is at this point. Um, people often have misunderstandings about the severity of illness um, and potential outcomes. Um, Dr. Murphy, if, if he um, improves to the point that um, he can have the cardiac surgery, um, what kind of risk would that carry as far as potential mortality and complications?